Welcome to the premiere episode of Friday Five. Again, I'm not being super original there, seeing as everybody seems to do a top five video on Fridays. I'm guessing it's going to be uh, because of the F's. It's not that clever an idea, but I'm going to be working with it. These will be where I talk about pretty much my top five favorite of whatever. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it in the realm of nerdiness, but I can't promise the occasional uh, bit of food stuff or uh, any other topic might pop up willy-nilly. Anyway, so for my first episode, I'm going to do a pretty simple one, at least from my point of view. It is the top five X-Men villains I would actually like to see in a movie at some point. Uh, criteria is they have to be fairly well-known X-Men villains. Uh, we're not going to be picking any, like, lowbrow or character-specific villains. Uh, so, and um, this week, just so you can see that I'm going to do a fail for these two. So after the top, five, after the number one choice, you will get a uh, the fail for this particular list. Someone or something I do not want to have anything to do with, be whatever the topic is. So this week, I would not like to see this character ever be in a movie, ever. Anyway, so let's get right into it. Ready? Number five. I'd love to see the Sentinels in a movie. And yes, I know that they technically showed up in uh, X-Men The Last Stand. You did see a Sentinel kind of wandering around in the background, sort of. It was implied to be back there. Wolverine did cut its head off and the head does come bouncing around. Which does imply that they know what Sentinels are, and Sentinels are somewhere, or possibly a project in the future. Um, well, Sentinels are awesome villains. They are uh, single-minded, uh, developed by humanity to combat mutants. They are um, adaptive, kind of like the Borg, although I don't remember if that they had that ability before the Borg became a thing, or if they picked it up later. But they do have it now. They adapt to mutant powers, and it's kind of neat. Uh, there are even big mute, or sentinel bad guys that you can use. Uh, Master Mold, the sentinel that creates sentinels. Uh, Nimrod, the sentinels from the future, which may actually show up. I'll talk about that in a second. Even Bastion, which is a uh, combination of two different Sentinels, Master Mold and actually a uh, unique Nimrod, who uh, actually starts a nano Sentinel program. Heck, Sentinels are so popular even on the X-Men, and there was another comic where a kid found a Sentinel in a uh, junkyard, repaired it, and it was like his pet. They are kind of a scary Terminator-esque bad guy that could show up, uh, especially as a weapon or a plot point for... Uh, another major bad guy, especially like Bastion. <laughs> the reason they're so low on my list, though, despite being such an iconic uh, X-Men villain, is the fact that I'm pretty sure they're going to show up in the uh, next X-Men movie, Days of Future Past, which they're kind of an important plot point in that, so if they don't, uh, I would say definitely don't go see that movie. I do not have high hopes for that film. Just not going to lie to you. Alright, number four! The Shadow King. Despite having uh, major connections with uh, um, Professor Charles Xavier and Storm, he's kind of a scary villain. Uh, he's at least as powerful as Charles Xavier, possibly more so since he no longer has a physical body and exists solely on the uh, psychic plane. Um, he's a major wrecking machine. He's a bad guy that will mind fuck you 15 different ways till Sunday, and you won't know what the hell's going on. Now, the last appearance I saw of him in the comics was... Uh, Psylocke was locking him away with her uh, telepathy, which caused her to lose her telepathic powers, but then her mutation changed. She got telekinesis, so I don't know what went on there. But yeah, he's kind of a scary bad guy. You don't know what he's doing, who he's working with, who's working for him, who's in charge. Uh, the only other big psychic bad guy that I'd like to see like that would be Onslaught, and that wouldn't work out. So yeah, Shadow King, he's kind of a creepy bad guy. He'd be a pretty good villain, or at least a uh, side villain, or maybe even the guy b working up for a trilogy of movies. Number three. Ooh, the Brood. For those of you that don't know, the Brood are a bunch of bad guys the X-Men ran into in the, I want to say late 70s, early 80s, and then later on in the first X-Men comic I ever read. 
They are uh, a parasitic race that infects a uh, the host race and transforms them into brood. Uh, the X-Men's first encounter with them, the X-Men got their ass handed to them. If a, uh, a certain character hadn't been uh, experimented on by them, come back as a uh, cosmically powered supernova, the X-Men most certainly would have lost. Uh, their second appearance, they actually started infecting mutants, which was kind of cool. Um, they're scary because of the fact that as they beat you, their numbers grow. Um, again, I don't know how that would work out in a film setting. Because it would turn the X-Men movie pretty much into Alien and Aliens. Uh, although, having Xenomorphs with the ability to, to shoot fire out of their heads and uh, the other cool powers is kind of neat. Uh, again, I would just like to, to see that. Uh, the few brood things that I have seen outside of the comic books have been pretty cool. So, Plus, they're one of my favorite villains, so if you don't like them, you suck. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, number two. This one's a good one. Uh, I think he would be an excellent, like, overall bad guy for an entire story arc. Uh, same with the first one. Uh, number one here, but... Mr. Sinister, Nathaniel Essex. He is a mutant who is experimenting on other mutants to attempt to develop the ultimate mutant. True, his, secret, his ulterior motive is to create a mutant that can destroy Apocalypse, but we won't talk about that. He's kind of a scary bad guy. I mean, he's... Like a mutant drug dealer. He's kind of shady, creepy. Uh, he has no good intentions for anybody but himself. Um, yeah, I think he's really creepy, and I think he'd be like a good long-running villain, especially if you were to do uh, like another trilogy of movies where Apocalypse is going to end up being the big baddie. Uh, having Mr. Sinister working in the sidelines and uh, being like the bad guy for maybe the second movie, and then you find out he's not such a bad guy. Although that does feel kind of like they're ripping off the second X-Men movie and the third X-Men movie. But, I digress. Sinister is still cool. He's creepy. He comes with his own collection of bad guys. Uh, yeah, he's his own super team. He would make an excellent choice for the movies. Number one, of course, is Apocalypse himself. Apocalypse is the mutant to fuck all mutants. He has a survival of the fittest kind of mentality. He goes out of his way to uh, constantly test mutants. Um, he has his own super team, the his four horsemen of the apocalypse. You know, death, famine, pestilence, and war. And, uh, again, that would allow you to bring in a lot of interesting characters uh, from the X-Men mythos. He wouldn't have to use the crappy four horsemen that he usually uses. I uh, would su suggest keeping with uh, Archangel as the angel of death. But, uh... Like, maybe switch Caliban out for the lame war that they use with his exploding palm technique, or maybe put Omega Red in as as opposed to, like, uh, Pestilence, thanks to uh, Omega Red's death spores. I mean, Apocalypse is pretty much the epitome of X-Men villains. Um, he is big, he's bad, he's destructive. He can fight a whole superhero team to a standstill by himself, plus he's got the backup of a bunch of homicidal maniacs. Uh, again, as a trilogy would work, he would be a great like build-up that he's coming, and that he'll be there, and then you know you throw him out in the, in the last film, and it's all-out mutant war. Uh, it would be awesome. I think that I'd love to see him in a film. Um, I don't, didn't like how they handled him in uh, X-Men uh, Evolution. That was kind of lame. But uh, a lot of his comic book story arcs would be pretty easy to convert to film. So, that's my opinion of the five mutant, or five bad guys I'd like to see in an X-Men movie. I think those would work out fairly well. But we do have a fail. Oh yes, we do. Please, movie makers, no matter what you do, no matter who tells you it's a good idea, never use Mojo. Mojo and the Mojoverse, for those that don't know, Mojo is a interdimensional television producer. Uh, over the years, he's done all kinds of stupid crap. He gave uh, Salak before she became uh, an Asian ninja woman when she was still a British supermodel. Uh, he gave her cybernetic eyes so he could film the X-Men. Um, let's see, he uh, created uh, the X-Babies because the X-Men, he thought they were dead. 
So he created child versions of them, uh, which aggravated the hell out of him. And they keep appearing in different comics, no matter how serious it, it, something's going on. X babies show up. It's uh, he's lame. He's a big fat dude on spidery legs. Uh, he's not really threatening. Uh, the only sad part about that is, with not involving Mojo, means I don't get Spiral, and Spiral's pretty cool. Uh, Spiral has had connections with other things. Uh, I could see her in an X Men movie involving the hand, or, or a Wolverine movie involving the hand, because she did work for the hand through her uh, extra dimensional body shop where she does cybernetic work for people. Um, technically, she worked with Donald Pierce at the Hellfire Club, but the Hellfire Club has already blown its load and moved him. Uh, I hated that with Kevin Bacon, but anyway. Please never use Mojo. Ugh. Big, fat, useless bastard. I mean, he's even horrible in the Ultimates universe, where he's just a big, fat television producer. Um, yeah. If you don't know about him, don't learn about him. Just, if you see a big yellow dude on robot spider legs, turn around and go the other way. Alright, thank you for joining me for this first little ranty episode. And I look forward to seeing you people sometime down the road. And again, remember, these will be on Fridays, so look for them then if you like them. Or if you have any ideas for any of these, feel free to let me know. Look me up on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, if you're on Steam, Resistance Zero with a zero for the last letter. I'm always up for a few co-op games. Take it easy, people. Bye-bye.